The case is somewhat complicated, but it's one of the finer moments of federal court watching. Basically, the Deposit and Finance Bank of Luxembourg owned controlling interest in a company called Euromerica Corporation based in Fort Worth. The bank holds the stock for a financial company in the country of Liechtenstein. Euromerica is run by Robert Klabzuba and Edward Munson, both of Tarrant County. The bank, through attorney Sterling Steves, contends that Klabzuba and Munson used deception to have issued and buy below their value enough shares of stock to end up in control of Euromerica. The suit further contends that the Luxembourg Bank's representatives on the board of directors of Euromerica acted contrary to their instructions and for their own gain in permitting the stock issue to take place. The whole federal complaint amounts to a huge international stock fraud suit involving people in Tarrant County and all over Western Europe, in which a major bank finds itself a minority stockholder. The case was just filed today, but before it's over, it should be a fascinating operation to watch. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. I know that initially you were a little bit disappointed when you came back to Kansas City. That was at the first of the year. Have things worked out a little bit better for you now? Well, really, I think the, the big thing, like I explained to you, Vern, was once I had left this league, I figured that uh, I was destined to, to go to better leagues, like last year when I played in the Western League. Uh, it was an independent team last year when I was drafted by them. Consequently, through the summer, the St. Louis Blues organization picked up the franchise and they picked up my contract. Now, to me, this was the biggest thrill of my life because I think they gotta be the best, if, if not the best organization in pro hockey. They've treated me real fairly. I'm playing a lot of hockey and I've got nothing but praise for the organization. And this was a big reason why I didn't put up too much of a stink when I was coming back to this league. They wanted me to help, uh, help out on the fence, some of the younger guys that are breaking in. Uh, I don't know if I felt them up that much, but uh, I'd like to give it that try, and uh, this is the main reason why I'm here. I can't believe that you talk about the younger guys. You mean you consider now that you're one of the grand old men of the league, huh? Well, this is funny, you know, <laughs> especially in hockey, you know. Well, I'm 26 years old, and uh, I'm about three or four years older than the younger guys in the league, and there's a couple of guys like Normie Dennis and myself and Larry Horning, and we are considered the old men in the game, and it's pretty pretty bad when you get to be tagged with an old man name and, uh, when you're only 26 years old. You realize what you're doing to J.P. LeBlanc? By <laughs> <laughs> he's got to fall in that category, too. Well, I'll tell you, I think, you know, I guess J.P.'s the only, uh, the only one that's left on the team from uh, the original start of the year. For the better part of two days, policemen and security officials from across the country have been closeted in this room, sitting at these tables. They are members of the Law Enforcement Council, an arm of the National Council on Crime and Delinquency. They represented small cities, large cities, small companies, and large companies. Their task was no easy one. It was simple, however, to identify the problems basic and common to law enforcement agencies across the nation. No definite resolution or policy came from the conference. Instead, committees were set up. These committees were set up to research and study and then later make recommendations on such problems as organized crime, victimless crime, police corruption, police killings, and community relations. The chairman of the committee is Patrick V. Murphy. He's the commissioner of police in New York. He talked with newsmen at the conclusion of the conference. He said the biggest problem, however, was within what was termed the fragmented criminal justice system, that it was simply just not functioning properly. Uh, I think of all of the problems uh, that were emphasized at this meeting, uh, the problem of uh, making the uh, criminal justice system work uh, more effectively has been underlined. As an example, uh, uh, police uh, chiefs and administrators from all parts of the country uh, emphasized their frustrations uh, about the problems in the courts uh, these days because of the backlogs and the overloads. Uh, the police officers who make good arrests in many cities uh, find their cases not disposed of for long periods of time or find that the, uh, uh, the serious criminal matters are not being dealt with in the most effective ways because of overloading in courts and correctional systems. 
The committees delegated with the responsibility of researching and studying the problems will make their recommendations when this council meets next May. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the move at the Baker Hotel. because we felt that the people of the city of Dallas should have the opportunity to vote on this ordinance themselves. We came to the city council uh, before they voted uh, to pass this ordinance and asked that uh, they give the people this opportunity and uh, they passed it instead. So now we are seeking a repeal petition to uh, give the voters a chance to uh, voice how they feel about this. We did not feel that uh, the people had been adequately informed uh, on what was in the ordinance. There were certain provisions that were not even made public uh, until after it was passed. This is Lemon Avenue, sometimes known as Franchise Row. Somehow, when the subject of a signed ordinance comes up, so does the subject of Lemon Avenue. It's signs such as these that the city intended to eliminate when it wrote the interim sign ordinance. Some of these are illegal under the interim ordinance. Most of them are not illegal under the present ordinance. And today, when the city sent out letters to Dallas businessmen advising that they would start enforcing those ordinances, many of these signs could not be built under the interim ordinance. Not everyone is happy with that situation. One of the most unhappy is Charles Meeks, who owns the sign company. Meeks announced today that he would file suit against the city claiming that at least two sections of the ordinance are unconstitutional. He talked today about that with Jim Mitchell on News 8 at noon. The consensus among the people who are charged with enforcing the interim sign ordinance is that it's terribly complicated. I talked to one man today, he said some of these signs are legal, some are not legal, some were built with permits, some were built without permits. They may have a tough time enforcing the ordinance, especially with the controversy now going on over the makeup of the Sign Advisory Committee. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move, on Lemon Avenue. Joe, uh, what do you think of the field, the playing surface? Well, today it's uh, wet, so it's slippery. I don't know uh, how it'll be tomorrow, because I don't know what the weather's going to be, but it sure does feel hard. You know, it's not as hard as some fields, and it's not as hard as ours in New York when it's uh, frozen, but it's a hard field. One of the backs, or one of the uh, linemen coming off said he played on ice. <laughs> well, this was slippier than some of those fields. Well, it's uh, a little slippery now because it's wet, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it'll be the same way for both teams tomorrow. I don't think it's anywhere near as slippery as it is in Miami. How do you feel about the Cowboys' pass defense being the last in the NFL? I didn't know anything about that until uh, recently, yesterday or the day before, someone mentioned it. I don't follow statistics that much. I look at results, more or less. And uh, I've heard that they've been burned a few times, uh, well, like I say, yesterday. But their record looks like they've been doing okay to me. And uh, the defensive line and linebackers are, uh, well, they're just a good football team. They have a lot of experience, especially in the secondary and linebackers. And Lily and Andre and Cole, uh, well, they're super football players. Uh, Frank Ramos, your PR man, was saying that the nerve in your left foot that uh, what was deadened because of that injury was the most painful you'd ever experienced. Yes, it was, but uh, that's about gone now. I don't have much pain with it or hardly any at all. Uh, it's still numb, but it doesn't affect much. Some of the San Francisco defensive backs were saying, quoted as saying you were just throwing it up for grabs in a few times. What are your thoughts on that? Probably. I usually put it up for grab. Red Corporation certainly can take place. Uh, you see, there are two classifications, and uh, uh, even though the opposition is uh, using the wrong classification and telling people that it cannot be reincorporated, that is not so. We have a letter right here from the State Board of Education at Austin, and they are telling us that this Kennedale School District is 
a common school district operating 12 grades and 16 credits, and it can be reincorporated immediately. Gerald Wayne Scott was found in this drainage ditch. It's only about three blocks from where he goes to pre-kindergarten or preschool in kindergarten at Sunrise Elementary. It was about the time that school let out yesterday afternoon that he was first reported missing. His father, Eddie Brinkley, was at the site uh, this morning where the boy was located. He said he called for a helicopter and search party yesterday afternoon, but to no avail due to the inclement weather and the rain in the area. However, the police did put out a search party this morning, and Officer L. O. Wiley was the officer who found the Scott boy's body in the ditch. I asked Dale McMillan with the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office if any foul play is suspected. No, it's no foul play. It don't appear to be. I'll put it that way. What do you theorize happened here, Mr. McMillan? Well, it's possibly high water, trying to cross. Possible drowning? Yeah, it's possible accidental drowning, but we got to uh, rule this uh, without any kind of foul play by doing an autopsy. When would that be done? That'll probably be done this afternoon. One of the side benefits I think that would be achieved by a program in which the individual can select his own housing would be the fact that we wouldn't have any, quote, 235 subsidy, subdivisions, where all of the people located in that subdivision are mm -hmm. subsidized. To this extent, the people building new subdivisions would not be building primarily for that market, but would have to build for a broad market where people are more discriminating in the selection that they make of their own housing. Therefore, improving the quality of the housing. Are you saying then that no, all... I, I am not saying, and I want to be very careful, I'm not saying that all 235 housing is substandard or poor quality, far from it. The Department of Transportation, however, has now done a study in which they indicate that for every dollar in premium, 60%, or it's actually 59 and one half percent, and I think that's where you got the figure, 59, 59 and one half cents of every insurance premium dollar is returned in the form of benefits. The other 39, uh, 40 and one half percent of the insurance premium dollar is consumed by the insurance industry in the form of paying their agent who writes the policy, their underwriting cost, their investigation cost, and so forth. So the, the relative efficiency is 40% of the insurance premium dollar is retained by the insurance industry, 60% is returned in the form of benefits. Now of that 60%, somewhere in the vicinity of 11 cents, it is true, does go to attorneys. Well, physically, uh, I've been 100% uh, well uh, as far as statistics. Uh, it hadn't showed up the greatest, but uh, I think this is probably one of the best years I've had as far as, you know, doing my job and carrying out what I'm supposed to do. As you move along in your career, this being your 13th, uh, do you ignore the possibility of injuries as you move closer to Raymond Berry's uh, goal of, or his record of 631 catches, or you just play as reckless as ever? I think you really do. You Once you get started in a ball game, you just play like you always have. You don't ever think about injuries. and. Uh, because if you do, then you start shying away from things, and that's when you get hurt. What is the feeling on the club towards Joe Namath? What what makes Namath do it where others can't? Well, naturally, he's a, a leader first. He's a, a great, dedicated athlete to the game of football, to his teammates, and to himself. And uh, I think the experience part of it is probably the biggest thing that the guys realize when he's back in there. He knows exactly what he's doing, and and why he calls certain things a certain way, and you really don't have any doubt in any call that he ever calls that it won't be a positive game. Come on, Hatter, let's go. It's cold. I'm ready to get back to the station. You about ready? Okay, you ready? All right. Let's go and get going. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
Excuse me. Santos, what are you doing down here in Duncanville? I thought you were up at the North Pole putting toys together. Well, I've been so busy putting toys together till I haven't had a chance to get my beard cleaned. Uh, well, is, is you got your reindeer double parked somewhere? Oh, yes, yeah, so, oh, yeah. Well, uh, should we go in and go in and get it done? Can we watch? Yes, you can watch. That's going to be a first. Okay, fine, let's go. Santa, it looks pretty good. You did an awful nice job, buddy. Yes, I did a real good job. Frank, go out there. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, sorry to have to go around. But well, you know. here, not okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir. My reason for thinking that we should keep our school uh, in our community and vote not to have it ab abolished is this. Uh, I'm, first of all, for local control of our school systems and our businesses. Should we be, our school be abolished? Uh, it means that we uh, relinquish uh, our rights of our local uh, citizens to control our school in the manner which they see fit. We are under the uh, operation and the jurisdiction of a, of a county school board, as I have been told by legal advice. 